this tech talk, I am learning about how the advantages of continuous mixing multiply as throughput increases. And I'm talking with Jim Warren, VP of Exact Mixing for Reading Bakery Systems. Hi, Jim. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, Joni, and thanks for inviting me. Now, continuous mixing is not a new concept. It's been around for about 30 years. Um, and I know that over those years, the technology improvements have really made continuous mixing much more prevalent in bakery operations. However, I've also heard that the higher initial cost and um, some of the perceived risks sometimes make bakers a little bit hesitant to making that overall investment. But today, I really want to unpack the total cost of ownership for continuous mixing. And I guess the first question is, how is continuous mixing cost effective for large capacity lines? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question, Joni. Uh, if you look at a continuous mixer, it, there, there's basically two parts of the system. There's the metering of uh, the ingredients, and there's the mixer. And each represents about half of the cost of the system. But as the rates increase, while the mixer becomes larger and the cost of the mixer increases, uh, the cost of the ingredient metering system stays about the same. So consequently, if you were to buy a system that's, let's say it's 10,000 pounds an hour instead of 5,000 pounds an hour, yes, you would pay uh, possibly double for the mixer, but the ingredient system would be the same cost. So consequently, uh, to go from 5,000 to 10,000 pounds an hour, the total cost of the system would only increase about 25%. As the rates get higher and higher, you, can, you continue to see this benefit. How does continuous mixing help with labor savings? Because that is something on the minds of every baker in our industry. Uh, yeah, Joni, there's uh, over the years, there's one example that I've used that people tend to relate to. Uh, imagine that you had two buckets of water. The first bucket has a hole on the bottom so that water is running out. Your task is to use the second bucket to keep the first bucket full. Now also imagine uh, that it takes 20 minutes to fill the second bucket. You can see uh, it's quite the trick to keep the second bucket full of water with the first bucket. Uh, that is an example of batch mixing. In the case of continuous mixing, you have the first bucket with a hole on the bottom, but now you have a faucet and a hose. So the operator, opens the faucet so that the water is running into and out of the bucket at the same rate. Mm -hmm. And then he can walk away and do other tasks. He's not, from that point forward, he's not involved in the mixing process. Okay, so that's really important because there are so many times in a bakery operation that the workers have to multitask and they're wearing several different hats when they're on a shift, right? Uh, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. In the case of continuous mixing, the operator isn't responsible for making dough. He's responsible for making the right dough. So he changes from a doer into a quality assurance type person. Okay, that totally makes sense. So then there's the issue of um, just the role that continuous mixing plays on the entire line. So can an investment in continuous mixing somehow eliminate the need for maybe other pieces of equipment down the line? You're making the dough at the same rate that you're using it. So what you have coming out of the end of the continuous mixer is a literally a log of dough. And then you have a oscillating knife at the end of the mixer, which cuts this log into 20, 25 pound pieces. These pieces are suitable to fall onto a conveyor belt and be moved around the plant, but there is no downstream equipment required to resize the dough. Uh, the mixture stuff does that. Okay, so then how does all of this lead to efficient throughput and less dough on hand? Because uh, if you think of traditional mixing, uh, you have to mix the dough prior to using it. You're not mixing it at the same rate that you are using it. So that means that any time you're going to have dough in the mixer, 
you'll have dough in the sizing equipment, and then you'll have dough on the line, which is being sheeted or somehow formed. So at any time you have three batches of dough uh, that's at risk should you have a downstream failure that requires you to stop production. Uh, in the case of continuous mixing, because you're mixing the dough as you use it, uh, you don't have any dough mixed ahead. So if you have a downstream issue in the packaging room or elsewhere, uh, you simply stop the system, but there's no dough uh, on hand that's aging and maybe not usable. Okay. That makes total sense. And it really, I think it illuminates this, this increased value, the higher the throughput that the more that's happening, if, the, if there's going to be um, a shutdown or a slowdown, you're not backing up the entire operation, right? That, that is correct. Uh, the other thing to think about with the higher throughputs, well, let's go back to the bucket example. So suppose now sales says to you, I have to have more water flowing through the bucket, make the hole twice as large. Well, in the first example, when you're filling it with another bucket, you, you have to have, you have to do something. You either have to have a larger second bucket, you have to have more second buckets, or you have to be able to fill the bucket faster. Uh, all of these things are another way of saying you have to have more equipment, you have to have more human resources. In the case of continuous mixing, uh, so you cut the hole in the bucket to make it twice as large, you increase the flow, you just open the faucet up wider. Again, you're putting liquid in, water in at the same rate that it's leaving, uh, no matter what the rate is, and then the operator is off to do other things. And I just, I can't even think of a time that all of these things have been more important than they are right now. So I can see where continuous mixing is a great solution. Well, we appreciate you saying that and observing that, but it's certainly it's finding the labor, but the other issue becomes training the labor. Your product is what the consumer judges you by, and you have to have very trained labor to operate your mixing process because that is the quality of your product. Yeah. So uh, if, you, if less people are required to run the system, uh, it's easier to fill the positions and it's easier to train. And so that is such a great segue because the other thing that I wanted to know about is how does this save money by eliminating errors that can often be very costly? Uh, yeah, it probably doesn't surprise you to know that I have an example for that also. <laughs> uh, you, 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 you go to the NBA. It's, that's the greatest basketball players in the world. But even the best of the best will miss one out of 10 free throws. And the reason is because it's not in the uh, human nature to be able to do everything exactly the same way every time. So if your mixing process is based on the operator putting in ingredients in the right amount at the right time, at the right temperature, every now and then he's going to miss and it's going to upset the system. Uh, let's go back to the free throw example. You could build a you could build a device that shot the ball exactly the same way every time and made 10 out of 10 free throws and 100 out of 100 free throws. And that's exactly what you're doing with continuous mixing. The quality of the product is not in the way that the operator performs, but it's in the way that the equipment performs. Okay, so the last question that I have then is what is the easiest way for a baker to learn more about how they can incorporate continuous mixing into their operation. Yeah, I would encourage a baker to go to our website, exactmixing.com. You'll see their uh, uh, technical papers about mixing. You'll see videos of different types of doughs being made on continuous mixers. So uh, we would encourage uh, a baker to start there. Uh, beyond that, uh, many companies such as ourselves offer R&D centers where you can come and produce your products uh, uh, in a continuous mixing uh, system on a pilot scale. So that's another possibility. So uh, there certainly are many ways to learn about continuous mixing. 
And then you have authored a white paper that explains everything that we've talked about really um, in, in very technical depth. So I think that's another great resource for them too. Would you agree? I would agree. And also that white paper as well as many others are available on the uh, website. So you can read those at your, at your leisure. And of course, I'm, I'm, uh, this is what I do. I'm always available. Uh, anyone should feel free to give me a call and we can have a casual discussion about continuous mixing. Well, Jim, thanks so much for your time today. This was uh, so educational and informative, and I, I really appreciate you taking time to explain how the benefits of continuous mixing can multiply the higher the throughput in the operation. Thank you, Joni. And again, thank you for inviting me to have this discussion with you.